What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you the Week 3 CWL Invite matchup. We got Forbidden, we got One Hive 2.0, and Forbidden walking away with a solid three-star victory. The final, 114 to 111, and what an action-packed war this was. We'll go ahead and break down each side of the map before I get into all the stats for you guys. Karma, uh, they did leave only one start. He skated away from them. And One Hive 2.0 did leave up two Town Hall 10s. They went ahead and left up Bliss. And they left up Irvin, who we actually swagged both of his attacks, as you guys see up on the upper left. Uh, Forbidden only using 78 out of their 80 attacks. Uh, we did clear all their 11s with our Town Hall 10s. Uh, but yeah, it was an incredible war. Some of the most incredible attacks I have record, I have captured, and I'm ready to share those attacks with you guys. But before we get into that, you guys already know by now, we got to start off with the Town Hall 9 action. Uh, this one being done by Serious Thinking. Uh, shout out to him. He seriously thought hard on what he was going to do with this base. We'll go ahead and let this play in the background while I go ahead and break down the stats for you guys. Starting with, of course, Forbidden, uh, putting up 11 Tempe 10 three stars. Uh, the third week in a row where we've been able to put up double digit numbers uh, with 10 v 10s. Uh, going, uh, another stat that was a big improvement and one of the best in the league, uh, one of the best in the league, going six for 10 at 10 v 11. Dips were of course 100%. Forbidden's Town Hall 11s are red hot right now and speaking of red hot the town hall nines hitting at an incredible 88 percent hit rate uh that basically translates to 14 for 16 only two fails at the town hall nine level and because of that that ensured that we would get 12 scouts any scout that you can get on these town hall tens in these competitive wars is going to help you out now i'll go ahead and jump over and show you guys where is it there it goes uh, the one hive 2.0 stats picking up eight 10 v 10 three stars they went five for 13 at their 10 v 11 game and this was this was the big difference uh, i mean every attack at the end of the day you know adds to the war adds something to the war but the big one coming at the very end i believe it was about give or take the last 45 minutes 2.0 did have a dip fail uh which which is detrimental especially when you're going up against a clan like forbidden putting up the numbers that we are putting up but yes one hat 2.0 did have one dip fail and their tahoe nines hit at 58 percent which provided them with four scouts but this was a, a very, very close war till about the last hour. One Hive 2.0 was actually beating us on three stars for the majority of the war. Uh, but at the end of the day, Forbidden walking away with the victory. Shout to Serious Thinking. Now, we'll go ahead and jump in to the Town Hall 10 action, you guys. We got to start off with Hamidan JSE, a.k.a. Storm. And this is, uh, this is his, yes, he's six-packed. Back in week two, six packing again here in week three, and of course doing it with the Sui Hero Lalo. So we'll go ahead and check, take a look at this attack and wait till you guys see the attacks I have in store for you. Definitely stay tuned. But starting off with heroes down here at the bottom left hand side, making wanting to take care of these two archer towers, and the king ends up beating through the wall and a couple wall breakers did pop that junction right there as you guys see that giant taking for the point defenses queen takes out the two archer towers but wait until you guys see what his queen is going to get he does still have ability even though she's at red look at the patience right here pops the ability grabs the bomb tower grabs the inferno tower and even grabs the enemy queen you want to talk about value from just your two heroes already broke the defensive ring and took out a huge key objectives a uh, few uh, air targeting defenses and the enemy queen and that inferno tower starting off with ace over at nine o'clock and up at 12 and basically bringing in these loons in about five thick groups of loons raid spell and notice he did he did want to get that queen notice he does not have a skelly spell 
in the spell composition but a rage over that expo heal over the expo the expo on the back end the wizard tower the archer tower some more haste over here on the upper right hand side to push all those loons in and look at that huge wad of loons heading into that island inferno tower and he's going to have a rage for the back end where he's pretty much going to one shot all the remaining defenses and bringing clean or getting clean up down nice and early he's got all kinds of pups all kinds of minions storm walking away with another six pack huge shout out to him uh, definitely someone you can count on to come through in these competitive wars absolutely loved it all right guys next up we have Swaggy Apple is going to be doing this insane, this insane attack. Wait until you guys see this. Look, check this out. Two bowlers for two wizard towers. Uh, bouncing, uh, getting getting those rocks skipped off of the gold storages. Uh, hard to have some a, a better way to set up an attack than two bowlers and two wizard towers gone right off the bat. He did go ahead and drop about three loons over at nine o'clock to take out that archer tower and he's pretty much set up a solid funnel dropping down six giants with one healer to keep them up goes ahead and drops down the wall breakers pops the wall and here comes the heroes and remember since healers are kind of doing that splash heal it's kind uh it is helping not only the giants but also the heroes poison spell to go ahead and slow down the queen and the enemy cc he does still have queen ability, goes in, takes out the bomb tower, and he is going to be having, he's trying to set up the show for the Lalo that is going to be coming. So right here, goes in and pops queen ability, uh, takes out that air defense, and even gets that inferno tower, starting the loons down here at six o'clock, dropping about five loons and the hound, a couple more loons to go ahead and target that other Tesla, which can go ahead and haste them in so the hounds don't get too far in front of the balloons. Drops down two more haste, over here at three o'clock and four, hasting those loons in again, trying to make sure those hounds do not get too far in front. And he does still have a heal and a raid spell to deploy, saving those for the top side of the map where we have quite a few uh, point defenses. We have that splash in that wizard tower, the two Teslas, but under rage and under heal, and even having one more haste spell to deploy, no question is this base going to get completely wrecked. And all the remaining defenses after that wizard tower are cannons and mortars. So this base getting clearly smashed. Absolutely loved the entry with the giants and the one healer, pretty much carving that entire bottom section of the base out uh huge shout out to swag apples also getting a 10v10 six pack this war all right guys next up we have bliss who is going to be doing a very interesting a very unique kind of queen walk bitch style attack starting queen over here at nine o'clock on the far left hand side of the base wizard to funnel uh those two collectors making sure that that queen is going to walk down and notice that she does have a pair of witches and a whole bunch of bowlers that she's gonna be sending right into this base and also a couple giants. So as this queen is making her way down, uh, goes ahead and drops down that rage spell as she will be taking on a couple point defenses, uh, the wizard tower, the cannon, just wants to make sure that queen stays up nice and full as she is now gonna be approaching the enemy CC. Drop down both poisons, kind of set up a, a poison runway to make sure she takes out the enemy CC and to ensure that she saves that queen ability. So he's already, uh, or she has already uh, cleared the trash with just a couple minions down at six o'clock and there's nowhere for these bowlers to go. But inside this base, dropping down a few giants, bowlers behind. What was the most unique part about this raid Check out uh, what she goes ahead and does with the king. As you guys know, that single shot Inferno Tower always finds his way or finds its way to uh, your BK. She goes ahead and makes the decision to put BK on the outside along with the CC bowlers. So as the king is tanking for all the defenses, those bowlers are wiping out all the defenses in range right from over the wall. We had a jump spell in the core and a rage. And you can kind of see that she's already completely gutted out this top section of this base. And everything is now in range of, I know she did drop that uh, heal spell to make sure that those CC bowlers do stay up. King still tanking up there. I uh, had to go ahead and pop the iron fist ability. And look at the charges still going. The queen started at nine o'clock 
walked down to six, made it through the core of this base with ability intact. One of the most unique attacks, a different way to look at it, something like a queen watch, uh, queen walk bitch attack. Huge shout to Bliss for getting this 10v10. And this one was a little later in the war, uh, giving Forbidden a lot of momentum, but absolutely love that attack. All right, guys, next up, we got TTD Black, Mr. Estonia himself, going to be doing a queen charge Lalo, starting queen over here on the far right-hand side at 3 o'clock, king down, just doing the smallest of kiwi walks uh, with just one wizard behind that king just to put a little bit more DPS behind him, making sure uh, that he gets that wall pop, goes in, drops down that raid spell, and a few wall breakers, gets the wall popped, and check this out. Uh, nice patience on that Infernal Tower uh, before he went ahead and popped that ability. He did charge that single shot. IT takes it out, goes and takes out uh, the enemy CC where he had that one poison to slow it down. And he does still have a, a three more rage and three haste spells to deploy. Another rage spell down as he is going to be engaging that enemy queen very quickly coming in behind that air sweeper. It goes in and drops down a minion up there at the top. Uh, any ounce of value that you can get from these troops as the Archer Tower is locked on the Queen. Goes in and drops down that minion. Uh, trying to take care of this trash nice and early. So here we go. As the Archer Tower and the Expo um, were locked onto the Queen. Goes in and drops down a few more wall breakers. Gets the wall popped. And here comes the flight portion. Starting at 2 o'clock. Dropping down one hound. Has three uh, separate groups of loons hasting both of them in to meet up with those hounds. And we have uh, two more air defenses, one right there in the core and one on the left-hand side of that expo. Right there inside that core, drops down another haste to take out the cannon before he drops down the rage to get the expo and the air defense. And check out the charge, you guys. Queen is still up. Uh, she was almost dead but was able to take out that archer tower just in time. So those healers could heal her right back up to full health. And here we go, getting very, very close. Uh, notice all loons are down now, but check out all the pups inside that core. Uh, we don't have queen ability. I already used that on the initial charge, but this queen is at full health. If anything, it would have been a time fail. Uh, but you can clearly see he has more than enough to get through this base. We'll go ahead and times to this. The only defense left up is that Wizard Tower Queen goes ahead and snipes it. TTD Black getting another three star. Uh, huge shout out to him. Always coming in clutch with a beautiful Queen Charge Lalo. All right, guys, this was going. This is going to be the last 10v10 three star we're going to be showing you guys before we get into one 10v11. That is a must see. Check this attack out, you guys. I could not believe it when I saw it. Check this out. We got five skeleton spells, one skeleton spell donated, maxed in the CC, and check out the core. We got the queen in there. We got two expos. We got the CC. Check this out with the rage spell down, dumping all six of those skeleton spells inside that core. Getting, I could not, and I actually got a chance to see this attack live. Uh, the, the the hype in the chat was unreal, but check that out. CC down, both expos down, queen is down. Now he's going to go ahead and charge into this 3 o'clock section. Juski coming in clutch on this one, you guys. Um, so here we go. King down, just do, setting up a nice funnel, uh, again, with one wizard right behind him uh, before he goes ahead and drops down those wall breakers. There they go as the king is distracting all the point defenses uh, coming from the archer tower and the cannon wall gets popped after queen and notice this is notice he picked this side because this infernal tower is on multi-target but regardless even if this was single target uh if this was a, sing a single shot it this attack still would have worked out he would have popped ability got the infernal tower would have gotten the air defense uh, and would have set up the show for this Lalo. So here we go. Air Sweeper is down. The other Sweeper at 9 o'clock is facing 9 o'clock. But starting off with these loons, dropping the CC Hound and a Camp Hound coming in from 12 o'clock. And Queen even ends up getting that Wizard Tower. Huge value from that charge. Not to mention 
how this attack started off, how he completely wiped out the core, breaking the defensive ring. No question how these loons are going to be pathing through this base, dropping down those three hay spells to constantly keep these loons moving through this base, going counterclockwise. And now he's going to be approaching the two Teslas, and there is still one air defense up, but... Juski has way too many loons left up. Check this out, you guys. It looks like he has more loons than he started with, and he still has one more hay spell. This base got completely wrecked. You want to talk about a non-meta attack, straight up base identification. Juski getting it done, and again, starting cleanup nice and early, uh, and even having some pups up there at the top, helping out with the minions. Uh, swagging that hay spell, a uh, huge shout out uh, to Juski, getting it done with the swag on the CC. Uh, you guys already know I always save the best attacks for, la uh, for last. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Now, I have to bring you guys the best the best 10v11 attack. We got Sar. Yes, we got Sar coming in here with an epic 10v11. Wait till you guys see this. Uh, so, uh, Queen starting over here at 9 o'clock. She's going to be walking down, uh, setting up a funnel and getting a lot of value as there is a lot of trash buildings and only a couple point defenses really targeting this Queen. Uh, the rest of the attack is just going to be a straight up bowler smash. But wait until you guys see how Sar ends up taking out this town hall. All right, so he goes ahead and drops down Gollum on the cannon. A couple loons up there at the top to go ahead and wipe out the Archer Tower. And those loons are also going to go ahead and take out one of the Tesla's giants, tanking the other cannon. Here comes the bowlers, uh, just kind of spam, spamming them down. We got a baby dragon up there at 12 o'clock and be taking out uh, the DSF and taking out all that trash down the side. And there goes the quad quake completely opening up this base and notice the queen is still up down there uh here we go raid spell down we have a poison spell to go ahead and take care of this enemy cc we got a pair of baby, baby dragons and a witch coming out of that but check this out guys the bowlers end up hitting down pat they do they do not get the town hall but check this out guys sar taking a shit in india Hitting attack on accident, did not drop all of his bowlers, but check out these three little bowlers that could. Uh, because of that, he was able to get the town hall instead of dropping all his bowlers. If he did that, this would have been a fail, uh, but Sar getting it done, I could not believe that. He was taking a shit in India and pressed attack on accident and still ended up getting the job done, swagging those three bowlers but yet those three bowlers were the three that took out the town hall. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this war recap. Forbidden walking away with yet another victory here in CWL invite 114 to 111 was the final. Huge shout out to everybody over in One Hive 2.0. Uh, was a very, very close war. Uh, until the last hour, we did not know how this war was going to pan out. Was very, very competitive. Best of luck to them in the rest of their season. Forbidden now at 3-0 heading into the bye week. One Hive 2.0 is now sitting at 1-2. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this war recap. If you guys liked it make sure you hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you have not already comments questions or concerns down in the comment section below as always this is Riggs from clashing ffs and i'll see you in the very next video